I wanted to show one more example of how a different problem can be presented on a test when you're dealing with curve sketching. We've looked at some problems where you're curve sketching where you do everything from start to finish. You derive it, you find intervals, you find critical values. We've also looked at ones where you work backwards, where you look at a given picture and ask questions about other functions. This one is more along the lines of the basic curve sketching, but what you'll notice is you don't have the original function. Instead, you have the characteristics. Essentially, what's been done is all the work as far as coming coming up with intervals, testing them, th that's done. You just have to take the information that's presented and figure out visually what could it possibly look like from the information. So we're going to go through this problem and when you read each piece you want to get in the habit of writing down next to it what that tells us using the calculus that we've learned. So if you look at that first line it says the derivative is greater than zero for negative infinity to two and from five to infinity. What that tells me is that we have increasing intervals in those two. If you look at the very next line, it tells us the derivative is less than 0 for 2 to 5, which means that it decreases. So one way is to write that. Other times I've seen students that have more uh, understanding, if they actually write it, what we're used to writing it, kind of having them go side by side, so you actually see what that means. It means that you go increasing to decreasing to increasing. The next line tells me that the derivative at 2 is not defined. It does not exist. What that means is that we think at 2, increase and decreasing, there should be a maximum. So either we have a situation where there's an asymptote there, so there actually isn't an a, a, a maximum there, or we do have a maximum, but it's a sharp point, not a smooth curve. So that piece of information could lead us to two different pictures, and they would both be correct, because all I know for sure is that you do not have a, for a derivative derived a derivative available. I don't know necessarily if the original is, is existent there. And then the last piece of information is telling me about the second derivative. It says the second derivative is bigger than zero for all real numbers, and that is telling me that it is always concave up. So you could either write it the way it's written, or you could write something like this, showing that for all numbers we have the concavity not switching. So that implies that there are no points of inflection. So there are other questions that could be asked from this information, and that's one of them. We could also talk about extrema as well. We're going to come up with a sketch. We don't have any points. That's OK. It just means our graphs may look a little different than the person next to us who's graphing them. I know at 2 and at 5, we have some things changing as far as increasing and decreasing. I know the concavity doesn't switch. So here's one example of what you could draw. You need to draw a function that is increasing concave up until we get to 2. But at 2, we either need to put an asymptote or a point. So one option is you could draw something like this. It is increasing concave up, and then it is decreasing concave up, and then it is increasing concave up. So here is one example of a picture that would meet every requirement that's there. We have concavity continuously being concave up. We have our switching from increasing to decreasing to increasing. And then we also have, we have an, an issue at 2. We have a sharp point. Now, some people might look and go, well, I really looked at that and thought at 2 there was an asymptote. So you could have something very similar happening. You could have this, and on the other side you could have this, where you have this minimum at 5. So again, it still follows the increasing, decreasing, increasing, and it still gives you that one minimum. So when you're looking at a problem like this, you, there are other things you could pull from this. Like you could, it could ask you, is there really a maximum? We don't know. It could be like the first picture I drew where there is a maximum that's a cusp or a sharp point, or it could be a situation where where the maximum should be, there's actually an asymptote. Um, and it could ask us again questions about points of inflection. That we know for sure there aren't any because it doesn't switch in its concavity in any way. So it gives you another way that I can ask a question. A lot of different presentations going on in these, in these test questions, so I want to make sure you're comfortable with all of them.